meat monster has escaped containment and is killing everyone in sight. Carrion is a horror game for this guy. If you've ever watched John Carpenter's The Thing, I'm sure you had one important thing to take away from it. Meat monsters are cool as hell. Clearly the rest of the world got the same impression, because it feels like you can't go 5 feet without seeing some kind of meat monster these days. Sometimes the environment itself is a meat monster. It stopped being cool when Stranger Things did it. A lot of things did. The point is, there's nothing scarier than being chased around by a giant teratoma. But have you ever stopped to ask yourself, what if I was the giant teratoma? Someone at Phobia Game Studio must have thought about that too, because they made Carrion. In this game, you control an unnamed mass of blood, flesh, bone, and hate, contained by... Generic science, guys. You've seen this before. After Texas passed some new legislation, they weren't able to keep you in a test tube anymore, so you wreak havoc through the facility. The staff get in the way, though. It seems like they don't want you to leave. It doesn't matter, you were hungry anyways. Carrion really provides everything you could ask for with that premise. You can possess guards and turn them on their co-workers. You can stalk groups of enemies and pick them off one at a time, grabbing them and carrying them screaming into the darkness. You can even consume enough bodies to grow to enormous size and engulf whole rooms with your throbbing mass. Despite how powerful you may look though, the scientists keeping you underground have just as many tools as you do at their disposal. You need to seek out every new ability you can find to overcome the roadblocks on your path to freedom. Some are environmental puzzles, some shoot you in the face. Carrion is a unique experience. There aren't a lot of games where you play as a creature so horrible every person who sees you runs away screaming. And this uniqueness makes the game well worth talking about, even if the gameplay can feel a little rough around the edges. Let's start with the basics. The genre I think Carrion best fits in with is Metroidvania. The huge laboratory slash botanical garden slash corporate office building slash a ton of other random crap location you are in is a series of rooms and hallways filled with different barriers. There are wooden walls too heavy to pull, giant screws you can't get a grip on, lasers you can't sneak past, and even unavoidable deadly explosives that your skin isn't hard enough to withstand. Just like in most Metroidvania games, the map is one constant, interconnected area. There are several smaller levels, but they are all connected by the sprawling, persistent frontier map. Further following the conventions of the genre, your ability to traverse it is limited. Early on, when you have no special abilities, you are limited to a small route surrounded by different paths blocked off by impassable obstacles. This can be frustrating at first when you see rooms full of hazmat suit guys you can't kill, but eventually, after playing a bit more and unlocking new abilities, everywhere you see can be reached. And I'll say, you definitely do a lot of seeing. The underground facility you're in is a sprawling, varied environment. You start quite literally in a garbage heap and move through waste dumps, old mine shafts full of mine carts that you can crush people with, deep sea bases filled with water, and even the killer robot testing facility. The whole game has this crispy pixel art look that makes me think of those games with dynamic, destructible environments, like Noida. On a surface level, at least, the game's environment is pretty dynamic. Blood splatters from your creature all over the walls as you pull yourself through the corridors. You can destroy lighting and background props while you flail your tentacles violently to kill that room full of nerds. Your monster moves like it's alive, and playing the game feels more like watching it than controlling it. The trail of devastation you leave behind sticks around too. You're going to do a lot of backtracking, and all those pieces of smashed machinery and splattered corpses will be there to remind you of good times past when you take a shortcut through the frontier again. The look of the game fits perfectly. Great environmental design, the monster is disgusting and frightening as it should be, and you even slowly infest the base with flesh growths that open up new areas and shortcuts by engulfing everything. But that's enough about how the game looks. Let's get into the meat of it, pun intended. After you escape your little tube, you need to begin searching for an escape route. You will spend most of your time wandering aimlessly through the frontier until you find the entrance to a level. These levels are small, self-contained maps with a unique theme, where you need to solve a certain amount of puzzles or difficult combat encounters in order to crack open the exit. It's a very smooth system. Carrion is one of those games where it feels like you're just wandering aimlessly and accomplishing all the tasks by accident. The map is laid out in a very natural way, and I almost never needed to become a navigator to know what route to take or where I needed to go next. These levels also generally give you a new ability that you can use to bypass specific obstacles on the frontier to progress. You get a lot of gross, fleshy tools to add to your toolbox. 
You get the ability to shoot webs to flip levers behind grades. You gain the ability to charge, which lets you blast wooden barriers to pieces. This genome you crack open allows you to turn into a swarm of worms that lets you swim through grates when submerged in water. You can turn invisible and bypass laser tripwires. You get harpoons that let you pull out these screws that block vents. You can grow armor which lets you bypass instant kill minefields. And most interestingly, you can grow a tendril that lets you connect to a human's brain stem and control them like a puppet to pull levers for you. If they aren't wearing armor, you can even explode out of their bodies to enter the area they're in. You have no idea how fun this is, it never gets old. Each ability is attached to a different size of your monster too. As you eat more, you grow bigger, which makes you more durable and allows you to apply some brute force solutions. But sometimes the puzzle needs a smaller, medium-sized monster, so you have to go drop off some biomass in the little puddle to get smaller again, which stops you from going complacent. Also, sometimes an ability takes some energy to use, so you need to charge up at one of these exposed wire stations. This makes for some great progression, as you feel like you're growing stronger throughout the game, but not just in hit points or damage output. You're growing stronger because you are getting more unique options to tackle problems creatively at your disposal. Nothing beats the satisfaction of going back through an old area that used to stump you and using a new ability to open a path you couldn't before. There are even optional containment chambers and levels that you need future abilities to open. They aren't mandatory, but if you do decide to go back to them, you can unlock some helpful bonuses. I'm just going to quickly talk about the game's soundtrack here. Overall, I think it gets the job done. There are lots of unnerving tracks with some unique, animalistic groaning, maybe? There's creepy background music, you just murdered some guys music. And even boss fight against the giant mech music. The composer was trying to make a horror movie soundtrack from the perspective of the monster, and I think he did a good job. But I feel bad when I say I only really remember one song, because I swear it sounds like there are clown horns playing in the background. I do really like the sound design, though. Your creature kind of squelches when you're pulling yourself through the halls. The humans have tons of screaming sound effects, which I would say is incredibly important. If there were only four or five, it would get annoying fast. Oh, and when you eat people, it sounds nice. You can hear the guards' radios break and give out static when you kill them. Even the environment has its own cool sounds, like the creepy heartbeat that comes from the level entrance meat tubes. It really helps to immerse you while you're going on your rampage through the lab. The residents of the lab aren't exactly just going to let you do all that without a fight, though. While at first the only people you encounter are scientists standing around or on the toilet or holding puny guns that can barely scratch you, who just run and hide from you or wait to get eaten, soon you will realize that this science company isn't one of those goofy fun ones like Aperture Science or Black Mesa or something. There's a small army of heavily armed corporate security guards and PMC contractors who are going to put you back in your test tube. In pieces. This game isn't just about puzzle solving, and there are enemies almost more dangerous than this grate you see everywhere. Combat is constant throughout Carrion, and offers a great break from the constant navigation and puzzle solving. Humans are food. It's in your best interest to eat every meat bag you see, since they effectively serve as health pickups. Early on, you're just going to encounter unarmed humans who try to run from you, and these brave guys with little pistols. They may not be that dangerous, but your monster is also nowhere near as durable as it seems like it should be, so it is in your best interest to deal with any threats quickly and efficiently. You can grab people and pull them towards you to eat them. This juices scientists almost instantly, but handling your tentacles to eat a lot of people at once can feel pretty clunky and awkward. At best, your immersion breaks because you realize charging into a crowd of people doesn't actually do anything like it feels like it should, and needing to eat them one at a time is frustratingly slow. And at worst, it takes long enough that it gets you killed. So there has to be another way, right? Well, you can grab more than just people. There are tons of physics objects laying around that you can just pick up, like these vents that you have to tear open all the time. What what would happen if... Clubbing people with heavy objects is a pretty optimal strategy. You can clear entire rooms surgically and quickly just using God's strongest piece of sheet metal. You can swing vending machines, vent covers, or just about anything else with enough force to kill enemies or even split them in half. 
Actually, people split in half really easy in carrion. I have this footage of this guy splitting in half for seemingly no reason at all. You can even pick up a guy and beat everyone in the room to death with his body. Combat is pretty easy. The power fantasy ends as soon as the guards show up. Guards are durable. You can't split them in half, and you have to chew on them for a few seconds if you want to kill them that way. Worst of all, each one comes with a powerful energy shield that will completely block all attacks. You can't even move through it, your tendrils can't move through it, even your strongest abilities are harmless. Their machine guns hurt, but they will also show you why your creature is scared of fire. It gets worse. The lab you're in must belong to Lockheed Martin or something, because it is absolutely packed with military hardware. You can't eat a mech, and its Gatling gun will reduce you to a redder than usual mist in seconds. Killer drones hover around you and fire high caliber shells directly into your face from behind a shield. Some are so small they swarm you, and their rotating blades cut you to pieces when you try and grab them. You can sneak up on guards before they activate their shields and attack first, or flank them instead of attacking from the front. You can even use physics objects to knock them down and render them helpless. Mechs have to be disassembled slowly, piece by piece, and you need to slink between cover quickly because if you remain exposed for even a moment, it's Jover. Drones aren't easy to take down either. You need to treat them like how a morbidly obese man treats his controller after losing a match of Overwatch 2. Even with all that ingenuity, it's an upward battle. You may be themed like something from a monster movie, but you do not have anywhere near as much plot armor. Encounters can be so difficult, it may not even seem fair. I'll let you in on a secret though. The new abilities you earn aren't just for solving puzzles. Each one of them has a use in combat too. The web shooting ability can stick enemies to walls, or knock them down for a while. While still useless against shields, if you can web up a guard before they turn it on, that isn't a problem. Then the enemy just stays stuck, waiting for you to bite his head off. The charge ability is incredibly useful in combat as well. It is just as good at shattering people's spines as it is at shattering wooden barriers. You can burst through doors and deal enough kinetic force to kill scientists and stun guards before they can even react. Going invisible is an option. You can sneak up on enemies because they can't react if they can't see you. The energy cost is pretty steep though. One ability I didn't mention before is the one that lets you grow spikes. This way you can instantly kill anyone you touch which you can also do with the charge ability that doesn't cost energy. The shield is also underwhelming, but if you activate it, you can take a few extra hits before the damage starts eating into your health. Then there is the harpoon ability. Don't even get me started on what you can do with the harpoon ability. Every tendril you shoot out can kill whoever it hits instantly. It can tear multiple pieces off a mech at once, and instantly impales drones to death on contact. You can kill whole rooms at once with this thing without even stopping. All of this makes the progression of the game even more masterful. Everything is integrated. Every new ability not only gives you a new avenue of progression in puzzle solving and navigation, but also a brand new way to fight enemies and apply tactics during the combat sections. There is no really boring skill that you can only use on obstacles. Okay, I guess turning into worms when in water doesn't really help that much during combat, but actually water itself is quite useful. You see, the monster is very associated with water. It was stored in water, it was found in water, you never drown and move just as well underwater as outside of it, and turning into worms just makes it better. Humans just die immediately. I guess scientists don't know how to swim. You'd think with their Johns Hopkins degrees, they'd be smart enough to know that they should have covered themselves in oil. The opportunity doesn't present itself super often, but if you can put a guy underwater, they die immediately. Even if they are one of the armored guards that is normally an ordeal to take care of. I couldn't think of a way to introduce this clip, so just look at this funny footage of a guy getting lit on fire and then jumping into the water that instantly kills him. Well, that must be all the abilities. Oh yeah, parasitism! Remember when I said possessing humans was the most fun puzzle mechanic? It's also the most fun combat mechanic. This corporation sure likes to use a lot of different weapons on you. It would be a shame if you used them too. You can possess a guard and machine gun everyone around them. Flamethrowers are even more fun. The possession process is fatal. Either they kill the host or you do by exiting the body. Also, those huge mechs with the Gatling guns? They are piloted by humans. I'm sure you can see now what makes it so fun to be the monster. You have fluid controls, a wide array of options in mutilating your foes, challenging threats, and you just look horrifying. You don't spend the entire game playing as the monster though. Sometimes you find these huge machines that you need to go inside of and then you're in a flashback.
why am I this scientist? Did they make the creature? Do they turn into the creature? If you want to find out, you have to slog through a few minutes of climbing ladders. Lots and lots of ladders. Now I need to wait for this guy to set up some explosives. These segments tell the story of how the science company found the monster, and you play as one of the scientists. To be honest, I don't love these sections. You move slowly and clunkily. There isn't really any gameplay besides a few brain-dead easy puzzles and a lot of walking and climbing ladders. So many ladders. This is also the closest thing to a story the game gets, so I guess I'll talk about it here. It seems like the scientists found you in the remains of some kind of ancient city in a pool of liquid during maybe an archaeological expedition. The creature was just in its little flesh pod not harming anyone, but when one of the scientists went to grab a sample, everyone is dead except for this guy. You try to get out, and you have to shoot a drone that tries to stop you in one of the only examples of gameplay in the flashback sequences. You manage to get back to some kind of extraction team sent to get you and escape. So, the creature has the ability to mimic a human form, but it must not be perfect because the science team detected it, and you end up in the world's crappiest containment chamber. At the very end of the game, after you clear out all the levels, get all the abilities, and eat everyone, you can return to the area where you started. It's a cathartic ending. All of these guys were behind glass when you first saw them, but now nothing will keep them safe. Then, in the anomalous materials vault, you find the last genome to reabsorb. It lets you turn into a person, and this time your imitation must be perfect because none of the scanners are able to detect it this time, and you can just walk right out. You take the elevator and walk right out into the city. Now the deadliest creature of all time is loose on the world. The narrative of the creature escaping seems all well and good. The purpose of the game is to get out, and they found a creative way for it to do that. But I don't understand the point of these flashbacks. They don't bring anything fun to the table gameplay-wise, and the only story they really show you is the scientists found the creature in a place. That's why they have it contained. I feel like it answers so few questions and wastes so much time that I can't see how it benefits the game in any way. Okay, since I have to discuss a game with almost no story, I'm gonna have to start really reading into it. So, the place where they find the monster does have a drone that tries to attack you. This drone looks the same as the ones you fight in the main game. This could mean maybe Relith Science recovered the design from this place when they were exploring it and looking for the creature, but I have another theory. I think this flashback isn't the first time they ever discovered the creature, but it's actually the aftermath of another escape attempt in the past. This explains why the same drones you see them mass producing to fight you are part of the ancient structure, along with other strange things like a stun gun and mechanical doors being there. So this means that at some point in the past, the creature escaped and wiped out a whole facility, just like in this game. But why didn't it escape? Well, we know the different abilities you unlock are natural abilities of the creature separated from it by the scientists. So the creature in this natural state does have the ability to imitate humans. However, it seems like this natural mimicry isn't perfect since the drone can detect it. Since the drone can detect it, this means the scanners that you have been shown to protect the exit probably weren't fooled. Which is why the creature couldn't leave, and had to wait for the facility to be opened from the outside to try to escape. The science guys probably knew this and sent the three guys in as bait, knowing it would impersonate one and walk out into the open, where they were prepared to properly subdue it and recapture it. Why else would all these mercenaries be waiting there? That leaves another question. If the creature's natural ability to imitate humans doesn't work on scanners, why does it work at the end of the game when you regain that ability? Well, I think I know the answer to that question too. And that answer is another question. Why did they separate that gene in the first place? If the creature was only in the facility to be contained, they could have easily just like sealed it in a vault or something. It can't exactly rip through solid metal even when it's at its most powerful. But instead they kept it and its genomes in easy to access but fragile containers. They must have been working on them. While naturally the creature's imitation of humans isn't perfect, they separated the gene and were developing it into working perfectly. And when you take it back by force, you are actually absorbing a modified version that works even better than before. Well enough to fool the very biometric scanners meant to keep you inside. The other genes were probably being studied and improved in the same way too. That's why they're always in such convenient locations, like the armor gene being found in the area where the explosive mines it's designed to counter are. The scientists probably found the creature somewhere or even made it from scratch and are actively working to improve it to make it stronger, faster, more versatile, and more stealthy. Why would they do this though? It's a monster. It kills everyone it gets its hand on. Maybe that's what they want. The monster is a bioweapon. We know Relith Science at least dabbles in military application. 
The lab has a small army worth of soldiers, along with military hardware and advanced weaponry like these energy shields and drones. So it would make sense for them to be seeking out further opportunities to develop innovative new weapons. This creature could be an incredibly powerful weapon. Imagine it sneaking behind enemy lines perfectly disguised as a random human, only to turn into a meaty mass able to level armies and infest whole areas with itself. If Realm of Science could find a way to control it, they could have one of the most powerful weapons in the world for sale. Maybe they couldn't find a way to control it before it was able to escape. Or maybe they could control it, but it just went rogue. Either way, it kills them all and eats everyone in their headquarters, so whatever plans they had probably aren't going to work out. I like to think maybe the creature just wants to be free, and after walking out disguised as a human, they just go on living in the world like that, with nobody ever knowing what happened. Maybe the ability worked so perfectly you actually just are a human now. The game doesn't give you the option to turn back after all. I call that the Pinocchio theory. Or maybe the creature genuinely does just want to uh, kill everyone in the world and destroy everything in its path. And this last scene of it walking out into the city means that the end of the world is soon to come. Well, that was my game theory episode. I had pretty much nothing to work with, so I'm sure if you want to play the game and overanalyze it, you can come up with your own crazy theory. Or maybe there is secretly a 20 issue comic for Carrion that I didn't know about that covers the story and lore in excruciating detail and I'm just a dumbass. This game is definitely still worth playing, even if you don't care about the story. My only real complaint is that there isn't really any replay value. Once you've been through the lab once, all your subsequent playthroughs will be exactly the same. I know it might break the game a bit, but I think Carrion would really benefit from a New Game Plus mode where you just start with all the abilities or something. Like screw progression, just let the player run absolutely rampant in the lab to mess around. But we don't have anything like that, unless you count the Christmas DLC. The game does have a Steam Workshop and some modding capabilities, but the scene isn't very active and I couldn't find anything that stood out. I'm sure there are a few gems in there for anyone willing to look though. Also, a lot of the puzzles felt like filler. I kind of think every action exploration game feels obligated to shoehorn in puzzles to break the monotony, but I don't think anyone came to play this game for the excitement of raising and lowering water levels. I get that they are here to give you a way to meaningfully use your abilities to progress, but I feel like the environmental Roblox do that fine. And they let you use your abilities and progress in a way that doesn't take a few minutes of needless busy work. That's about all I have to say that's negative though, and neither of those points are that big of a deal. I highly recommend trying out Carrion. It has a great physics-based combat system, it looks beautiful, the puzzles are there, and you can split people in half with vent covers. I don't know what else you could ask for in a video game. I haven't heard any word about sequels or DLC or anything, and this game has been out for like four years, so what you see is probably what you're gonna get. I'm sure you can tell this channel is going through a bit of a metamorphosis lately. You can probably tell that I say a lot more in this video than usual. To be honest, I found that I cut so much out of the last one that there really wasn't a huge amount of stuff I actually said in it, and if people aren't here to listen to me ramble about a game, then why are they here? Thanks to everyone still along for the ride. If you really want to support me more, subscribe to my Patreon. For only $1 a month, you can see my videos a few days early, and have a larger voice on my creative process through some exclusive polls. I'll see you next time, miners. Carrion can mostly be played one-handed, which is really good news. The next game I'm going to talk about can be too. No, not that one, it lost the poll. Welcome, conscripts. I am Nori Moneo, Mentat to the Duke. Perfect.